generally, uh, you know, the single moms and so on, in the media all portrayed as these heroic, flinty, courageous, Grapes of Wrath style heroines who are just trying to do the very best under very difficult circumstances that they had no hand whatsoever in creating and so on. I mean, this is just the general mythology, right? That the men are useless and women are heroic. I mean, it's just the stuff that's been pounded in for a couple of generations now. I think at least two. Uh, generations. And of course, the, the, the problem of, of spousal abuse is, is significant. Uh, spousal abuse appears, appears statistically to be uh, evenly split in that uh, women's abuse against men uh, roughly, rough, is roughly proportional to men's abuse against women. But of course, you really don't see a lot of female abusers uh, in the media or in the um, uh, in, in culture or arts or anything like that. Because again, this idea that women are heroic victims, uh, this <laughs> This hangover of the Tony Soprano, my mother was a saint, <laughs> kind of delusions. Uh, it's just so strongly entrenched for, you know, fundamentally reasons of political and economic power. If you can portray yourself as a victim in a state of society, you get resources. And all of the propaganda about women and the propaganda about men, the positive propaganda about women, the negative propaganda about men, I mean, it's fundamentally about evoking pity, which is what sociopaths like the most as an emotion, it's one that leads you to be most susceptible to manipulation and exploitation. But uh, it's fundamentally about using the state to transfer resources, and the best way to do that is to evoke pity, right? Which is why you're always robbed from because you, you care about the poor, right? You care about the sick, you care about the old, you care about the poor, the poor children, and so on. Which, of course, we do, but um, in a state of society, yeah, art follows commerce, right? And the commerce of trading the blood money of politics is the creation of the victim. And this is why uh, women's role in the cycle of violence, that women uh, abuse more children uh, than, than men do, uh, and uh, uh, that women choose to have children with bad men, um, that women choose to have children without men around, uh, and all of the incredibly negative consequences of that. I mean, children growing up without fathers, well, growing up fatherless is the single biggest disadvantage you can conceivably give a child. It's more significant than race, more significant than money, more significant than neighborhood, more significant than culture. Uh, it is the most destructive thing that you see, most single destructive thing you can do to a child is raise him or her without a father. When I was growing up, I would say that there was almost no more foreign concept than the idea that a man had any kind of utility within the family. That was about as weird an idea as you could think of, as you could imagine. When I was growing up, a father's men were portrayed as buffoons. I mean, okay, if you wanted to dive a car and have it turn into a submarine and take out a Russian nuclear submarine with poison-tip batwing missiles or something, then Obviously, a guy was going to be your man, and James Bond was his name, and that was all. But, you know, assuming that wasn't your daily vocation, the idea that a man had any kind of fundamental utility to a family, to a woman, was incomprehensible. Because you almost never saw it. You almost never saw it. You know, women were competent, more attractive, uh, cockier, and women put up with men, right? That was the general story of the entire culture around me when I was growing up. Women put up with men. Men were selfish, men were difficult, men were entitled, men were lazy, men were incompetent. Men were, men were clueless, fundamentally. That's the big story, you know? It's like the woman would have a headache and the man would still want to have sex. He'd be clueless about things. The man, uh, the woman would go away and the man, the, the dishes would pile up and he'd just sit around in his underwear picking Cheetos out of his belly lint. Uh, men were clueless, men were incompetent, men were uh, childish, uh, men were overgrown infants, men were uh, needy, men were uh, pathetic, men were, right, and the women put up with him. Oh, I have only two real children, but I have three children. Ho, 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 Bob, he's such a fool. Right, and this continues. You look at the sitcoms, of course, the... <sighs> The women are always smart and competent, and the men are always uh, ridiculous. And about, you, you couldn't, I mean, you, you couldn't conceivably get away with portraying any other group 
with such a singular level of malevolence without being called an unbelievable racist or bigot. Like if every black character in uh, the media was portrayed as your average white male was portrayed in the media, I mean, the accusations of racism would arise mere nanoseconds after the beginning of the airing of the first episode. And there would be more than accusations. They would be, they'd be accurate. <laughs> that would be true. Or if you portrayed women, or if you portrayed gays, uh, with the same singular haughty contempt and maliciousness with which men are portrayed. Uh, you homophobia and, and I mean it would be I mean, the media would be all over you but men particularly white men of course are the group that can be regularly uh, slandered and portrayed as, uh, as idiots, fools, needy, malicious, mean, destructive, entitled, foolish, irresponsible and that is something that was just every, it was omnipresent it was omnipresent that women were, were brusque and competent and sensible and, and women cared about other people and women were interested in making sure that everyone was happy and, and the men were just blundering around like bulls in a china shop uh, wrecking things and needing things and wanting things and pawing at things and you know basically it was like living with a a fairly large pretty smelly drunken bear that wanted to copulate with you on a regular basis this is how being a father, being a husband, being a family man was portrayed over and 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 over again. Relentless propaganda, of course. And women had to be portrayed as heroic and women had to be portrayed as victims, as long-suffering, as putting up with men, because women as a whole needed a huge amount of stolen resources to provide for the children they had irresponsibly had with incompetent or absent fathers. But it's just a it's just a bait and switch. It's a smash and grab, right? I mean it's it's still omnipresent, right? So The Good Wife is actually a pretty good show. Julianne Margulis and Chris Noth and um, some other really uh, Christine Baranski and, and I mean she's a great actress and in it of course the Chris Noth plays the husband and the husband is uh, is terrible I mean he's a philandra he sleeps with hookers he does drugs he's a politician and he's just terrible terrible all around and so she kicks him out and her children who statistically would go to pot figuratively literally are doing great they're wonderful children fantastic handling the divorce with great aplomb and so on, right? They don't act out, they don't get bad grades, they don't do anything bad or wrong. Everything is just peachy keen. And she's a struggling, heroic, single mom. And so what does, what value does a man bring to the family? What value? If you're a dude, just look in the mirror. What was I told was my value to the family? Were there shows wherein a selfish woman divorced a decent enough man and wrecked the lives of her children and then had to beg him to come back because she only got everything that he was bringing to the table after she kicked him out. It's not an implausible story. It happens every day. Well, the first half of it happens every day, thousands of times. Did you ever see that story? Did you ever see what happens to a family when a father is is kicked out or is absent uh, and um, that the woman is behaving badly it's the same story but I just want to point this out how many times were men portrayed uh, positively and I don't mean and then women were portrayed negatively but you know if there's going to be uh, if there's going to be dramatic tension then one person has to be acting better than the other at least in the moment so was it at least 50 50 did you see the stories of the selfish and destructive women uh, who made decisions who couldn't be reasoned with and who destroyed their own families through this uh, selfishness? Well, no, of course not. You should see that at least 50-50. I mean, did you even see women who... See, every time a woman is abusive, then she, that has to be explained away. Every time a man is abusive, it's causeless, right? This is, again, this is something we don't even notice. It's so pervasive. But as a man... Did you feel 
essential to the family. You are essential to the family. Statistically, factually, scientifically, you are absolutely essential to your children. That your presence and your absence to, in your children's lives is the single biggest determining factor as to their success or failure in life. Do you know that as a man? That you are absolutely essential to your children. Do, do you know that a woman is the very safest in a marriage? This marriage is always portrayed as dangerous, right? Well, it's dangerous in a marriage, you see, because the man might beat you up. The man might be a drunk. You weren't responsible for choosing him, but hey, the man is dangerous. Well, and then of course for the woman, it's like, I'm free, uh, you know, if I get out of the marriage, then I get to date these sensitive artistic sculptor types who are slightly graying, slightly older, who awaken my sexuality, my all oh, this nonsense that goes on in this, this mess. I mean, do you know, as a man, that your wife is the safest she can be in a committed marriage with you? That's the safest place for a woman to be. That you are essential to your wife's safety, protection, security. Do women know that? If you're worried about abuse, well, you're far more likely to get it from a live-in boyfriend or a date, an acquaintance, boyfriend. Far, far, almost infinitely less likely to get it from a husband. A husband and a marriage is the safest place for a woman to be. Do you see this story where the woman divorces a husband because she's dissatisfied because some other woman is whispering in her ear, Mm, foo foo, <laughs> all of this stuff about how life's just so great outside of a marriage. And she goes out and she gets beaten up and she realizes how nice and gentle and kind her husband was and so on. But is it something that you know about? Statistically, these things are all true. These are the facts. These are the facts incredibly hard won at the cost of countless millions of children's lives, at the cost of hundreds of thousands of rapes and murders and assaults violence, destruction, abuse, the holocaust of so many children's lives over the past couple of decades, past two generations. This is very, very hard one knowledge. It's not being told to men, of course, because the prejudice of men as essential and necessary equals is something that, if accepted, would fundamentally change our entire society, particularly our political chaos, right? So the rise in child poverty in America over the past 30, 40 years can all be directly traced back to the breakdown in the family. There is not a problem with child poverty in the U.S. There is a problem with the breakdown in the family in the U.S. Marital breakdown should be a fundamental focus of environmentalists. Right? If you really cared about the environment, you would focus on keeping families together. The environmental destruction that is wrought by family breakdown is huge. It's one of the biggest factors around. Yes, you need two houses where you only needed one. You need a whole bunch of duplicate toys. You need to drive back and forth all the time. You mean, the, the, the cost of family breakdown to the environment is unbelievably high. But will you get environmentalists doing something actually intelligent to solve environmental issues, which is to fund marital counseling? Well, no, of course not. Yes. <laughs> Most of them are agents of the state, to, there to increase state power and so on. But it's huge. It's a huge effect. Crime and, and I mean, uh, you, you go on and on. The family breakdown is, in terms of the rise of the size and power of the state, monstrous. I mean, if you dump a father, it doesn't mean you don't need additional resources. You just have to get them from the guns of the government rather than the open hands of the father. You know, it could solve sociopathy in a generation if women would just stop breeding with sociopaths. <laughs> and if men would stop breeding with sociopaths too. But I don't think that we've been told any of this fundamentally. We've been told all the complete opposite, that men are an eye-rolling additional burden for overworked and heroic women. 
right? And and you say that so that men don't complain, right? So, um, you know, it's like a bad boss who always threatens you with being fired, right? Keeps you on your toes. You're not going to ask for a big raise if you feel like you're just barely contributing anything and you're there at the um, long-suffering whim of your boss who has a soft spot for you that he can barely understand. If you have this sort of Kevin Spacey-style boss who is just constantly scorning you and putting you down, well, then you're not going to be competing with him. You're going to be exploited by him. Right? You understand that putting people down is essential to exploiting them. You cannot exploit a man or a woman with a strong sense of their own self-worth. It's not, not going to happen. And so men need to be exploited. And as a result, you get married men working hard, providing beautiful things for their families, who end up having to pay massive amount in taxes to pay for the shitty choices of women who have kids with idiots. But what's terrible about our society as well is that there will be no turnaround, no apology, no admission of fault, no admission of error. There are a few. Phyllis Schlafly, Christina Hoff Sommers, there's some, uh, some women who are basically saying, sorry, not that they did anything wrong, but you know, they're kind of saying, oops, right? But this is the speech, of course, that men will never hear, that men are owed, that men are deserved. And uh, tell me if this strikes a chord with you at all. It goes a little something like this. Dear men, we are incredibly sorry. As a culture, as a society, as women, as filmmakers, as other men, we are incredibly sorry. We have been putting you down for years. We have been insulting you for years. We have been denigrating you for years. We have been caustic. We have been destructive. We have broken you down. Because we want things for you from you that are unjust. In order to get you to bend over backwards for us, we had to break your spine. And we have relentlessly pounded you with insulting stereotypes with destructive messages, with undermining cliches. And we have pretended that we don't need you, that you are something we put up with, like a farty, stinky, ancient dog kept around for mere sentimental reasons. And we have exploited you, and we have used you, and we have thrown you in jail for impossible standards of alimony and child support, and we have regularly used the courts, and we have regularly uh, threatened you, and we have abused you while only calling you the only abusers. And as a whole, we have done all that we can to put you down and to turn you to the service of our own narcissistic needs. And we are incredibly sorry. We made a huge mistake. The evidence is in that you are essential to the family, that you are essential to the health and happiness of children, uh, that you are essential to the health, happiness, and safety of women, uh, and that society fundamentally lives or dies by your honor. And we have been teaching you for decades that you have no honor, that you are pigs, that you are selfish, that you're lazy, that you're greedy, that you're immature, that you're sexually obsessed, that you're untrustworthy. And we have, of course, pretended that the money that you bring into the relationship is immaterial. The only thing that matters is our dishes, not your work. And of course, because the government will provide us all the things that you don't, you've become fundamentally much less necessary. From a resource standpoint, from a financial standpoint, we can survive as a family because of the power of the state without you, the father. But the children suffer enormously, sometimes irrevocably. The girls suffer because they get pompous and arrogant and think that they can do it all by themselves. And the boys suffer because they get locked into a state of perpetual adolescence where they have tragically listened to the lies told to them about manhood and femininity. Where they say, well, look, I guess I don't want to be a burden. Um, uh, I'm clearly not necessary to a family. In fact, I would just be another problem, another straw on the back of my wife's camel load of endless chores so uh, you know I'm obviously uh, you know dangerous I'm obviously bullying selfish lady gr lazy greedy grabby so I will not uh, burden uh, women the, the new nobility for for men and men want to do right by women at least the vast majority 
The new nobility for men is simply to not get involved in any of this stuff anymore. Because when you're told that you're a problem, when you're told that you're a burden, when you're told that you're a foolish, farty family pet, it's constantly knocking over all of the wonderful, beautiful feminine China in the known universe, then what you do is you say, well, okay, I will absent myself from this situation because I don't want to be an additional burden. And as a result, because men, it is now considered honorable at a very deep level for men to not involve themselves in family life, to not get married, to not be an additional burden, to not cause additional problems for the long-suffering women who obviously do a great job raising children without men and, in fact, uh, seem very eager to uh, have men out of their lives because of this portrayal of men as these selfish, scratchy slobs. Well, the new heroism, the new nobility, the new honor for men is to not impose their needy and empty and grabby and destructive selves on the noble women. Right? This is what male nobility has been tortured into. It's changed from a recognition that women and children need men desperately to have a functional, healthy, and happy family life and for the children to grow up wise and mature and responsible. It has now become, well, my nobility is to not get married. My nobility, my heroism, my contribution to society is to avoid marriage and to avoid fatherhood. Women have got it, and I'm told that I'm just constantly a burden, and I'm told that I'm a negative. So, I am going to avoid that. And then, as a result of that, men get a lot more disposable income, and the market changes to reflect that, right? The propaganda occurred before the market shift, right? Right? Men were portrayed as, as foolish parasites, and so men stop getting married, and men have all this disposable income because they're not getting married, and they're looking for other things to entertain themselves with, and therefore the market provides all of this other stuff. Right? The travel, the games, the porn, the whatever, the toys. But the propaganda came first. And the apology will never come. Nobody will ever say to you, we are so sorry. We put you down. We humiliated you. We told you you were unnecessary, that you were a burden. And the fact is, we were completely wrong. We as a culture have destroyed the family, and it's only getting worse. Men, we need you. Men, husbands, fathers, providers, we need you. We thought we could do it with the state. And that means the children are all born heavily in debt to fatherless homes, to shitty schools to a life of underachievement, of increased criminality, of distractedness, of lack of focus, of very little ability to forward plan, defer gratification, all the things that are required to be good husbands and fathers in the long run. We are so sorry. We lied to you, we put you down, we told you you weren't necessary, and we were completely wrong. We were worse than wrong, because if you're wrong about something, it's just for yourself. That's one thing. If you're wrong about something, and it harms your children, it harms the children of entire two generations, we are so sorry. We are so sorry. We made a mistake. Men, please, please, come back. <laughs>